Nasal polyps are the result of long-term inflammation in the lining of the sinuses. What happens over time is the tissue that lines the sinuses and our nasal cavity become very inflamed and the tissue grows. It grows and creates these masses called nasal polyps. We don't really know the cause, although it definitely relates to inflammation and that can be from an allergy, it can be from a sensitivity, but it's kind of similar to the asthma model. In asthma, we don't know what the root cause is. What we do know is that in asthma, the chronic inflammation that lines the lower airway in the lungs creates problems and obstructions and patients have to use daily steroid therapy to calm that tissue down. The polyps, as a result of inflammation, cause blockage of the nose, and that can lead to nasal obstruction or congestion. It can lead to a loss of smell function. It can lead to sinus infections because the polyps can block the natural openings to the sinuses so that the sinuses don't function very well. When someone is told they have nasal polyps, it's important to make sure that the right diagnosis has been made. Often these patients will see an otolaryngologist, sometimes an allergist, and a nasal endoscopy will be performed. And this is a very simple, safe, uh, relatively painless procedure that takes about a minute or so once the nose is numbed up. And that allows the ENT surgeon to look deeper inside the nose where the polyps generally grow. Once nasal polyps have been confirmed, then usually some additional workup is necessary to generate a full picture of what is going on with that patient. This involves a sinus CT scan and often also some uh, blood work so that we can look for things such as eosinophil levels or elevated IgE. Both things can be suggestive of an underlying inflammatory problem, not just with the sinuses, but also with the rest of the body. Often, patients with nasal polyps should be considered for allergy evaluation. The reason is an allergy may be one of the underlying causes for that chronic inflammation. And if we can identify what the patient is allergic to, then we can treat that better, either with targeted medical therapy or even with allergy shots. Sometimes, patients are also allergic to non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen or aspirin. That's a specific situation called aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease. And we can reverse that by treating patients with aspirin desensitization. The first line treatment for nasal polyps often entails a trial of medical management. That can include nasal steroid sprays, sinus irrigations, oral steroids, and on occasion, even oral antibiotics. Quite often, sinus surgery is needed to remove polyps and help ventilate the sinuses or open up the sinuses that have been blocked by the polyps. We try to create an open floor plan of the sinus cavities and think of it like a house. You wanna remove the non-structural, non-load-bearing walls inside the house so that there is a nice wide open floor plan so that bad things can get out and good things like saltwater irrigations and topical medicines like steroids can get in and bathe that sinus tissue. Occasionally, during surgery for nasal polyps, I'll place dissolvable stents called Propel. Propel stents release mometasone, a steroid directly to the sinus tissue that needs it most in a time release fashion. These stents help patients heal faster with less scar tissue, with more open sinuses, and it controls the inflammation while they deliver the steroids. Just as with asthma, it's important to treat patients after sinus surgery to help minimize the chance they come back. One of the primary treatments we use now are topical steroid irrigations. Usually we use a drug called bedesonide, sometimes mometasone, and we add that to the saline or saltwater irrigation bottle and patients irrigate with this solution once or twice a day. After surgery, when the sinus openings are larger, 
That allows the steroid solution to penetrate into the sinuses and bathe that inflamed tissue in hopes that that will be enough to calm down the inflammation. There are treatment options available if the polyps come back, and most of these treatment options are non-surgical. One option is a steroid-releasing implant called Sinuva. It's an implant that can be placed in the office into the ethmoid sinus cavity, and over three months' time, it releases Mometazone, a special steroid to help decrease the inflamed tissue. Another option is a device called Exhance. Exhance uses the patient's own breath to blow fluticasone deeper into the nasal cavity than standard nasal steroid spray. A new treatment option for patients are a class of drugs called biologics. These drugs are often administered by injection once or twice a month. And traditionally, these drugs were only used for patients with asthma. Now there is a drug called dupilumab or dupixent that the patient can deliver on their own at home twice a month. And these drugs have been shown to significantly decrease polyp size as well as improve asthma symptoms. These drugs are quite expensive and do require insurance pre-authorization. Sometimes revision surgery is necessary. When all of the medical therapy doesn't work, oftentimes it's necessary to go in and just remove the polyps so that the topical therapies can work again. Fortunately, all of these different treatment options are very beneficial to the patients and what used to be a very challenging disease to control is now quite easier to control with all of these different medications and surgical options and procedural options that we have available to us today.